Hey, you there. Thank you for watching, and welcome to Forge Lens Forever. Today, I have a six-player phantom on the map, Bunny Roanoke. Let's go ahead and introduce our player, starting off at the 12 o'clock position in the north of the map. We have Nick01. He is an Aeon, and he is in glow in the dark green as a 1500. In the 2 o'clock position here to his east by southeast, we have Bergi. He is a Cybern. He is in Chevy Crimson, and he is a 1300. In the four o'clock position, we have in Royal Blue is Gary the Go. He is an Aeon and he is a 1400. In the six o'clock position here in Imperial Grid, we have Boxer Row as a 1600 ranked Seraphim player. He is the highest ranked player in the game. And in the northwest or in the northwest direction, in the eight o'clock position, we have Hershey. He is an Aeon. He is a 1500 and he is in Rust. And in the 10 o'clock position here in Barbie Pink, we have Battle Moose. He is a 1400 and he is a Seraphim. So for this Phantom game, we have three Aeon, two Seraphim, and one Cybran, which means there are no UEF players in this game. Obviously, apologies to those who are loyal to the Empire. There are none of UEF players in the game represented. But hopefully, not only you, but everyone else will enjoy it. It is a Phantom game. It has been a while. Since I have casted a fan of game, so I felt like it was high time for me to do so. I am going to speed it probably back up, not back up, but probably speed it up to about 8. Of course, the early, early game of Phantom is essentially just build your eco. And as we can see here in the totals, looks like we already have our two Phantom players of Nick Zero Run in the 12 o'clock position and Gary the Goat in the 4 o'clock position just due to the fact that we have those two players at about 500, 450, 500, depending on their power, income, and all of that. We, I do think the Paladin for this game might be Bergi here in the 2 o'clock position, but it does, uh, I mean, Hershey is kind of getting up there as well, so maybe he is it as well. Does look like there is conversation in chat. I think build range is increased. No. Uh, looks like there's some conversations between the two players. 2253, right first. Okay, so it looks like both of the Phantom players know who one another are. And it does look like I'm going to slow down just a little bit because I think four is a little bit too quick to talk about what's going on. Delhi Laser and Bergi. Huh? I mean, it looks like uh would be a good idea. Nick 01 to allies, so he's only talking to Gary the Goat there. Actually, no, technically he would be allied with everyone i think it, i don't know how it works with phantom specifically because if you talk to allies you're technically allied with everyone so you're talking to everyone instead of just the all chat i don't know how that realistically works 100 percent nick says gary the goat to bergi it looks like bergi is actually snitching on nick zero one which again gary is a phantom so trying to get innocence to focus on another phantom rather than you is a very smart idea and look here she's saying gary for me so there is a again gary might be spotted out he does have a t3 naval facility online pumping out what is he pumping out just p1 frigates he has a t3 facility only pumping out frigates he's going to spam up a bunch of t3 frigates oh sorry t3 naval facilities over here I definitely like this play because Aeon builds to the left, as you can see. Well, yeah, he builds to the left. They build to the left. So it's a lot easier for them to be all lined up on the left rather than be built on the right. I think all naval facilities... No, this facility builds on the right. And that just has to do with the pathfinding around the edge of the map. It's kind of annoying to move around. There is a couple of destroyers in that mix as well. But in the northeast, we already have a break between Bergi and... Nick01. Nick01 still allied with everyone else but Bergi. Bergi essentially saying, no, I'm going to fight you, Nick. I think it's you, and I'm going to go for it. And he does start to assault that main facility here of Nick01. Nick01 does have a couple of T3, sorry, T2 naval, and is up, it's not upgrading to T2, but it's going for a lot of destroyers here. There are a couple of Salem's online, but it looks like there's more destroyers online here for Nick01, so he will force that away. T2, Torp Bombers over the top, trying to take out one of those naval facilities, upgrading to T3. He takes that out. This one will have to be the primary now. Those bombers did their job. It's blue and red right, says Hershey to Battle Moose. I want to say Mouse. I yeah, I want to say Mouse, but it is Moose. For some reason, I feel like Moose and Mouse are essentially the same word, but they're not. In terms of how they're spelled. 
Anyway, T3 Galaxy Quest Battleship already online here for Bergi here in the 2 o'clock position. But there is a ton of destroyers online, those Exodus class. And that will most likely either force that Galaxy to be, you know, retreat or, I mean, he'll stand his ground. There's a couple more coming online. This one about to finish off as well. So, the, again, the downside with this force outbound from Nick01 is they don't have the hit points to basically tank a ton of shots. However, there are so many units. It's essentially target saturation. There's only so many now destroyers in one galaxy online that they just can't deal with so many units. Essentially, it's like T1 spam, but for T2 Navy. We do see, it looks like some artillery is being built here. Those Gunthers trying to force back those destroyers. And that second galaxy does get completed. Probably would have been better to build just a bunch of destroyers to try to counteract the destroyers outbound here from Nick, but Gary from the south comes in and assists in taking out Bergi. Unfortunately, Bergi is in that position where he is sandwiched between two phantoms and just receives pain here. Feel like Hershey still allied with everybody but Nick01. It does look like Nick is broken with everybody but Gary, it looks like. So yeah, that is exactly what I would presume is going on. Gary is still allied with Everyone but uh, Bergi, but I wouldn't be surprised if that uh, stays active for very long. The hives have been taken out here, or at least most of them here against Bergi. Bergi going for a monkey lord to try to sit him on the edge of his island and force back all this naval pressure. But with a bunch of destroyers outbound from both of these Aeon Phantoms, you can see there are five over here. And for Nick, there are obviously more than that. There's 14. About 20 destroyers off your coastline. Definitely not the best environment to be in. T3 Pigeon has been targeted, but the monkey has been completed. And it looks like he'll be able to deliver justice to his enemies. But unfortunately, the Pigeon facilities do go down. There are a couple more up here. Bergi might be targeted. He has T3 engineering speed on board. But unfortunately for him, I don't think he's going to get out of dodge. Laser does open up, and again, the monkey's going to go straight into the water, try to hide from all of that oncoming threat of the Phantom Navies. We did see an attack outbound from the western side of the map here from Nick01 against Battle Moose, but Battle Moose holding those off with some of those Yasnel T3 sub hunters. Dangerous in the sense that they pump out so many torpedoes, just overwhelming the torpedo defense on board those destroyers. I was about to split it for a second, but I feel like this attack outbound from Nick in the west is really going to do a whole lot. This attack is definitely worth, obviously, monitoring. Engineers trying to build the second one. That's going to be stopped. Obviously, the mass income here for Bergi is now very much depleted. He's only at 200, to be fair. But, uh, again, still devastating here. His entire island is gone. His engineers are about to be just destroyed as well. And the T3 land will not be online here for very much longer. The Calm trying to make its way to the northeast corner of the map. The Monkey going to try to go all the way around and hook and maybe go after Nixer Run and help his innocents out by taking out some of his infrastructure. In the west, it does look like those destroyers are gaining some ground, but all of those Yasao are retreating in the face of them, forcing those destroyers to come ever so closer to Team Innocent's Battle Moose's artillery positions. He is getting some PD online as well. And that will definitely assist with dealing with those destroyers. And it's just look, look at the torps. They're just not stopping. Even T2 static torp launchers are online dealing with this incoming threat here from Nick01. And, of course, it is a phantom game. And because I have been aware, made aware of this between now and when I did the last phantom cast is due to the fact that Seraphim do not have RAS comms. They don't have the RAS uh, upgrade on board their SACUs. The mod gives... SACU Rascoms to the Seraphim, just like Cybern Hives are given to everyone. And that's what creates this glitch with all of these uh, ACU highlights for these Seraphim players for both Boxeroo and for Battle Moose. So again, that is why that happens. It's annoying, but it's not terrible when it's only this particular mode. So I will leave it alone for now. We do see... The Tempest producing his own naval units. I hardly ever see this feature used in the game of FAF. You can see that naval uh, unit of the Tempest actually producing his own 
units. I'd love to see this. It's essentially the Atlantis version of naval uh, production. Of course, the Atlantis can produce its own air facility, air units, and the Tempest can produce its own units. I think it's only T2, though, if I am not mistaken. I think it can only produce T1 and T2. Yeah, only T1 and T2 can produce engineers, but essentially the, the lore behind that is uh, obviously it cannot produce a unit that's as almost as big as it, so it doesn't just have the housing for it. We do see, of course, two innocents in the southwest have now teamed up to deal with this oncoming threat of Gary, both Gary and now Nick trying to cannibalize against Bergi's position here. Bergi is, st Bergi is still alive. Again, I don't think I'm saying his name right, so I do apologize if I say his name wrong. But uh, it's, he's just trying to survive. That monkey lord is getting closer and closer. I don't know if Nick notices this. Okay, he might notice. He does see a radar signature there, so he, they will assume it's the calm or it's the monkey lord. But now another Omen class battleship online here for Hershey. Diverted to the north to assist against Nick01. Of course, the benefit and the disadvantage, I would say, for both these phantom players is they only have to focus on one front at a time for now of course we have the innocents in the six o'clock eight o'clock ten o'clock and two o'clock positions and these two phantoms isolated and essentially neutralized one innocent already hasn't left the game but is still there he does still have a couple of t3 mixes so he can still produce something but doesn't want to stay online looks like t3 torp bomb bombers used to deal with that micro before he even gets onto land that would definitely help the eco here of Nick 01 and uh, it did there's a lot of mass fabricators that could have been annihilated by that laser but uh, again the downside of course is once the phantoms break sometimes they get back together but sometimes they don't and now you're fighting usually a war on two fronts against usually one innocent player and one phantom player and at that point in the game the innocents have a chance to come back, but usually the Phantom players go, we're going to kill all the innocents off, build a bunch of stuff, and just throw it at one another. And that tends to happen, but there's also that inkling that, like, well, if I wait too long, this Phantom player will build up more resources than me, and I'll lose, so I need to break now. And then, it, you know, so there's definitely, like, a catch-22 of when do you break with your supposed frenemy of the Phantom, and in this case, that is Nick01 and Gary. Makes it very easy to figure out who they are because they are at the top of the scoreboard. We do see some SSUs running around getting some reclaim, as well as some SSUs outbound from Hershey as well. I don't see any Rascoms on the front line here for Gary to be. Oh, there's a couple over here. There's not that many where all the action is taking place. Tempest versus Tempest. It's Aeon v Aeon, and there is a ton of omens. We do see some of those Hathums as well, those T3 nuclear capable battleships online of course I'm still practicing trying to say nuclear instead of nuclear it's essentially I like to add another uh, syllable into that word I mean, sometimes I'm successful at it sometimes I'm not but uh, the person who did point that out to me just says it's good that you recognize that because I do if I say it wrong please let me know I mean obviously I have my own way of speaking with accent whatever the case may be but uh, if I'm saying a name or a word wrong please please let me know I I appreciate the correction. I appreciate the advice. I really do. But again, thank you in advance to those that do make it a point to say, hey, you're saying his name wrong. You're saying the unit wrong. You're saying whatever word wrong, whatever the case may be. We do see some gunships. Not going to do a whole lot here. There's a lot of, I mean, there's T1AA on board all of these frigates. And as you'll see here pretty shortly, they are specters. So, again, in my opinion, better than stingers. But uh, the Tempest will be perfectly fine and falling back and allowing the frigates to come into range. The multiple Tempests online is definitely something to look at here for Gary the Goat. He has three of them online, building a fourth one as we speak. And this naval fleet could get very, very dangerous here. We see in the north, it's still a back and forth, but the Innocents holding a lot stronger here in the north than they are in the south. There are two Innocents diverted to this southeastern player of Gary the Goat. There's only essentially 1v1. There was a little bit of assistan assistance out from Hershey, but mainly it's just 1v1 here up in the northwest. And Nick01 at 2.3k mass income here is just pumping out naval units. Of course, I'm a little partial to Phantom Games as well because it's just not necessarily all Navy, but it's 80, 
something percent Navy. Just, I don't know, I just have a huge fan of Navy. I don't know why it is. Maybe it just goes back to the fact that I like uh, space battles and that kind of, kind of sort of thing, and it's space battles but on water versus space battles in space. It's kind of how I, uh, I don't know, maybe that's how I draw the correlation. We do see just more and more Yasas, more and more Yasas. I feel that battle moves will definitely be bombarded eventually by some omens. And Nick not even prioritizing T3 construction besides his aircraft carriers to pump out ASF or T3 tort bombers or strap bombers, whatever he wants to pump out. He's really just focusing on spam. He's just holding off Battle Moose at bay for the time being. And his engineers, uh, not his engineers, his Rascoms are online scooping up Reclam. But you can see the difference between how close Gary the Goat is to the island of Baxaru versus how close Nick is to the island of Battle Moose. And again, it's a 2v1 in the south between Innocence and Phantom. And it's a 1v1. We do see a missile launch outbound here from Bergi going after some mass extractors and now we'll go after some mass fabs. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Another missile barrage is inbound. I don't know what it's going for, but it could really just blow up this entire ma uh, mass fab grid. T3 Max is offline and there goes some missiles inbound. Eh, not everything, but a two of the bigger ones and a couple of the mass torches were taken out. It does look like there's going to be some volcanoes spammed up to assist. They draw off two of those mix missiles. Definitely what you want to use in dealing with multiple groups of missiles at the same time. Missiles launching once again, going after this position in the northwest now. And again, Berge still online, still online and cooking, being annoying. He knows he can't win, but if he could be annoying, that's better than nothing. And we see SSUs blowing up one by one, two by twos. Trying to hold off this now quad tempest and just a ton of awesomes. Siege, siege is uh, essentially the idea here with these tempests. Just annihilate everything in your path and call it a day. We even see some sub hunters. The T2 Vespers are also online, running around down there. T2 Torp bombers trying to do what they can to hold off those tempests. But the Hathums are low in number, and there's as many Hathums as there are T4 battleships, so Team Innocent definitely has to find a way to deal with this. Here she says, peace. Okay, you are going to go with Nick, but Nick is to... You know, you, but you... Okay, you are you going to win, but Nick is the stronger one. Uh, I would say Nick has the better eco, but in terms of the fleet, definitely Gary has the advantage. It does look like the fighting... It's still going on here in the north. There's now a ton of omens, and I say a ton. I mean, I came, you know, came back to over here, and there was nothing. And then, you know, I just came up here a couple seconds ago, and there is a ton of omens. They're being produced by the threes, essentially. A ton of, you know, these engineering station, these hives pumping those omens out, and Team Innocent is going to be crushed in the northwest by the weight of these omens. Team Phantom doesn't even look like they're even thinking about disengaging with one another. We can see there's not even a fleet built up by either of the Phantoms. You do kind of see that once in a while with Phantoms as you kind of build a tiny fleet just to kind of hold off any initial push. But Betagy still has his own island in the northeast now going after Nick. I wonder if he's going after the SMD or going after the Mass Fab. The shields are down. Going to strike at the mass fab, kill off one of them, kills a couple of hives as well. Shield generator is down, but that doesn't really matter. The omens. The omens are online. There's 28 of them in the span of maybe five minutes, maybe six. How fast is he building those, I wonder? Oh, no, he's building those probably one a minute, roughly. But missiles coming and taking on a chunk of his eco as well. He's dropped down to 2K income now. Because he has a ton of SSUs, has a ton of other you know, T3 mixes and whatnot. But uh, a chunk of those mass fabs are down. We'll save him on those power bills, but uh, we'll not save him on his generation of mass. And Battle Moose trying to just stem the tide here. But there's a ton of omens constantly pushing forward. I heard an explosion. That's probably a SSU somewhere dying of overexposure to just missiles or torp bombers or torps or plasma or shells or whatever the case may be 
You think this is the calm? Yep, that's Boxeroo trying to retreat. He is the furthest one away. That would make sense. But those omens also as well, just not stopping their roll. Hershey with a decent amount of Vespers, T2 sub hunters online here. But essentially now two innocents are knocked out of the game. Not officially, but unofficially there's two innocents knocked out of the game. I feel like one of these phantoms should break pretty soon because it's not really looking like, I mean, both of them have comparable fleets now. Ton of omens, of course, in the north and omens plus tempests and more being built as we speak. I feel like it might be time for a Phantom to think about this because if one gets a huge fleet online, it's going to take forever to chew through that other fleet. And that might be an advantage. It might be a disadvantage. Of course, in uh, in Phantom, Paragons are nice to have, but they're not as useful in a sense that if a Phantom goes for Paragon, you have infinite resources essentially anyways. You would rather have something to funnel those quote, infinite resources into, whether that be artillery or nuke or whatever the case may be. So Paragon, I mean, it's just obviously adds a ton of income to you, but you have to spend it. Whereas the Seraphim player of Battle Moose and a Boxer Guru do have access to the YOLO, which is obviously very versatile and can just nuke everything. And the unfortunate thing, of course, is they're now on the receiving end of tons of firepower. The Seraphim player in the south for Boxeroo is essentially eliminated. And the Seraphim player is under bombardment as we speak. And the only other faction of the game is Betagy in the northeast for its Cybrin. And he's also knocked out. So again, the players slash factions that really only have access to their game enders are Gary and Nick01. And I don't see either of them going for that. And obviously the Paragon is nuclear anyways. If it dies, if it you know, loses all of its hit points, it explodes. Not as big as a nuke, but still does a decent amount of damage. With a small island like these players have, it's not really useful if a third of it is blown up. How much percentage you guys getting? Blue is looking pretty scary. Battle Moose says to all, so it looks like Battle Moose trying to encourage Nick to engage, but it doesn't look like Nick is listening. Split some of his forces up to go to the north side Ber Bergi control case. It's now three innocents remaining. He was knocked out of the game for a while, tried to do what he can. This facility is about to die as well, and we'll just explode anyways because there are no transfer of units. It is a no share game. It isn't even share until it is share until death essentially, but no share. And there's now partial share as well. That would definitely juice up the innocent. Eco's very, very... Well, it can. Usually, if someone control Ks, it's... Their entire base is gone. So giving a couple of Master Tracks wouldn't be the biggest pain for the fandoms to deal with. But I do understand why it is a no-share game instead of, like, a full or partial share. And those destroyers ripping through all of those T1 facilities. And the exodus has occurred here for Battle Moose's... T3 SACU Rascoms, but unfortunately there are a lot of Vespers online, those T2 sub hunters pumping out all of those torps. That's probably, yep, that is his comm. I'm getting pretty good at identifying what uh, SACU for the Seraphim are the comms. Looks like he's going for an upgrade, maybe going for a nano or a teleporter or something. And Hershey, he doesn't really have many defenses left online. And now Gary the Goat essentially sharing the 2 o'clock island, but for the most part owns about 50% of the map himself, roughly. And it's not really looking good here for the Innocents, of course. One Innocent base remains, and those SACUs are be hunted down to extinction. I don't even know if Nick knows. Looks like he does know that's the comm, so he's targeting that exclusively now. And he can see him, so definitely that's what he's going after. Those omens now travel south, and the omens here for Hershey just cannot withstand. They cannot withstand that uh, incoming attack brigade or fleet or whatever you want to call it. And these facilities will be wiped out here for the innocents. Essentially, there is no hope. It does look like Nick01 does get the kill on Battle Moose's commander. Definitely knew that was going to happen. And now it's two innocents remaining with two phantoms as well. 
And it's really not looking good. Let's take a look at what's going on overall at 32 minutes. Nick at 2.1K income. Gary the Goat at 2.2K income. Here's she at 600. His base is being surrounded by both of the Phantoms. One Phantom owns essentially 50%. The other one also owns roughly 50%. So it looks like it's going to be a Phantom B Phantom game. Let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win the game. Of course, if you haven't done so already, please like the video. Boxer Brew has been defeated by Gary the Goat, leaving one innocent remaining, that being Hershey. But again, let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win. And of course, thank you so much for watching to this point in the video. And I encourage everyone to continue to the end. And of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And that those fleets are going to merge. Doesn't say. It looks like Hershey's actually teamed up with... Nick01, Nick01 deciding to give the we can be friends not right now, right? Okay, that's just rude. That was red, man, at start. Thought red thread was phantom at start. Well, that, that didn't really work out for a while. You were always going to have too much eventually. I'm trying to read some of the traps. Save me, Nick. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> And we see all of those Vespers now surra almost surrounding the column of Hershey being like, hey, get me out of here, Nick. We will win together. Well, I don't think that's really how that works, but uh, that might be how that works. Here goes Hershey's base just annihilated. And those omens are engaging. This is a lot of omens on screen. It's essentially all exclusively Aeon. So many Tempest. Tempests are online. Well done, Hershey, for being alive, says Battle Moose. Yeah, he is the last remaining Aeon, not Aeon player, but the last remaining Innocent. And I think there are only Aeon players remaining at this point. So, yeah, it's just Aeon tech. Unless uh, an Innocent share technology, which I highly doubt. Because it would have to travel all the way in nonsense. But look at this fleet from Nick. It's trying to hold off the bombardment here from Gary the Goat. But that is a lot of nonsense. Oh, it's just devastating here for the Innocent plus Phantom team, at least the uh, Frenemy Alliance at this point here between Nick and Hershey. They're now engaging here in the east, and now Gary just sends everything he has northward. T3 radar. He says, Nick, Nick just didn't go for radar. Nick, I could have helped you. <laughs> Battle Moose being like, why did you kill me? I could have helped. But uh, it's not going to be the case. He is dead, unfortunately. Team Innocent's last remaining hope is Hershey. But again, I do not see that going his direction. Unless both the Phantoms just mutually assured destruction destruction one another, mad one another. I do not. You are too dangerous to be kept alive. <laughs> Put him in. <laughs> love, the, love that uh, quote here from Nick01. Uh... Yeah, it made me laugh there. Ah, see this sister? She's laughing. <laughs> and he's going for some transports. Maybe he's going to deliver his uh, SACU somewhere. And there go the ASFs moving to the middle of the map. Intercepting the ASFs here from Gary the Goat. There aren't really a lot of air online here for him. So maybe Nick will go in that regard. Looks like Hershey is being uh, escorted away by his transport. I don't know if that was built by him or not. It's all Aeon, so it's not really hard. That was a trap. There's a uh, Hershey. I don't know in reference. The entire map is a trap. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, Lil gets that compliment. Uh, anyway. Just look at this. Gary the Goat now investing on other islands here. Starting to grab the 6 o'clock position and moving in to grab the 10 o'clock position. Sorry, the 8 o'clock position. Those six Tempests are online producing units as we speak. Looks like he's producing subs, I think. Oh, maybe they're frigates. Mm, they look like subs. Yeah, they are subs. They're T2 Vespers. I don't. I forget if that's what they look like, if the trails look the way they do because that's how you can tell they're building. I don't remember. I don't think they look like that normally. Are there any down here? There's one Tempest hanging out over there. More aircap carriers. There are some donuts now being built here by Gary. Is he just going to crash damage his opponent to smithereens? I don't know. Those Vespers are coming into range here from Gary to go to push northward. There's not going to be any assistance outbound from Hershey besides just hanging out. He's going for his own donut. 
I don't know if Gary notices that he's over there. He does know that there are some sort of enemy signatures over there, but not realistically going to focus on it. Probably assuming those are just Hershey's uh, SACUs hiding over there. His comm has, of course, fleet over here, building up home. This is mine. There's uh, Hershey. This is his home. Oh, he's, oh, he's going to build a nice little home. Oh, that's cute. Look at that. That is that's pretty cute. He's going to hide himself away. Essentially, he's going to sit there, and then once Nick deals with uh, Gary, he'll just come and just drop bomb on whatever the case may be. And the ASF fight does occur. It looks like Team 2's Gary has pumped out more ASFs in the interim, and those Ormonds are just ravaging the Othum, uh, the Othums, the Othums here from Nick01. Look at that firepower. Essentially, two to three volleys from each of those Othums just take out one of those battles. Look at them just boom. <laughs> Almost actually one barrage essentially takes all those out. The uh, Tempests are coming into range as well. So it does look like it's just the wave pattern, I guess, that was down here. Not necessarily. Although there's one over here doing it. But these ones have... These, this one has stopped moving. This one is still producing, but we're still moving. So I don't know about that really weird. He just got one million Rascoms. I mean, how many Rascoms does Gary have? Let's see. Oh, that is AA. 169. Nick, 01 has 108 so not terribly behind and Hershey of course has his own set 24 so combined the northern team at this point is what I'm going to call it has less Rascoms than Gary the Goat and that's obviously evident by the fact that Nick is behind Gary at 2.2 versus 2.5 K income and unless Nick does something about this discrepancy in mass production he's gonna have not great day a couple of donuts are inbound here coming in from the east gonna go after his main base take out his you know standard eco solution not standard but his stationary eco solutions of the t3 mixes and the mass fabs you do see those donuts kind of just hanging out i don't see any asf oh there they come they're coming in to intercept the first donut and second donut will activate its laser. First donut has been defeated. Going to land on top of a decent amount of those hives. Decent amount more hives do get taken out. Second donut falls get a little bit further. We'll take out another chunk of those hives. It looks like about half or so of the hives for Nick have been eliminated, reducing his build power quite a bit here. And has also taken out a couple of other mass fabs in the interim. But now we see Omens attacking the hives directly, trying to get that nice little AOE on top of all of those hives. It's not, the build power is not looking good here for Nick01. And the Tort Bombers are in full swing here for Team Phantom, not Team Phantom, but Nick01's AO. That's a ton more. I like how there's just one donut from Hershey. The one hero donut targeting some of those Othams, getting some kills. You know, at 35,000 mass killed, you know, it's pretty worth it for a donut. But those, oh, that's probably what, 150 if not. Oh, there's, oh, there's more. Oh, there's more of them. Probably 250. Oh, I was wrong. 316 bombers are online. Going to rip through all of those Omen class battleships very, very quickly and then target those Tempest. Gary needs to get some AA. He does bring in a couple of his aircraft carriers, but needs to get a ton of cruisers online as well because this is a ton of nonsense to deal with in the air. Even if Nick01 loses both of his T3 naval headquarters, he still has all of his air that uh, Gary has to deal with. And if his comm, which it is, is on land, it's not going to be great. These torp launching capable subs are just annoying everything here in the north. Lots of T2 torp launchers are being established as well. Pretty quickly, I might add. But uh, there's just a ton and ton of these sub hunters. We now having the bombers assisting, obviously, the omen. Not assisting the omen. Assisting the donut killing the omen. There we go. From Hershey. So, Gary, can I just have one land? We call it a draw, <laughs> says Hershey. I don't know if he's in any position to ask for land. But he does have another donut. So, the last innocent has a donut. It has two of them, actually. So, you know, that's not too bad. Of course, there's 300 plus bombers online. So, anything he has in the water would be dead. But, uh, you know, he's doing his part here for his uh, Islands 
uh, ally member, al alliance, alliance. There we go. I don't know why that word was so hard to say. Alliance member of Nick Zero One. Nick Zero One, look how many. Let's see. 414. They've multiplied. They're like bunnies. They just don't stop launching torpedoes at anything that is in the water. Now they're going to probably target the aircraft carriers. There are more of them coming into range as we speak. We see, let's see, 15 of them online. They have a ton of ASFs being stowed for the time being. Do we see any T2 cruisers online? Uh, there's, no, uh, yeah, only four. Only four of them are online. Definitely needs probably 30 of them, 40 of them. The ASF's trying to target all of those bombers, but again, even if they go after the bombers, they have the donuts. They target the donuts, they have the bombers. The ASF's coming for Nick. And it's a one, two punch here. Actually, one, two, three punch here from Nick and Hershey. Hershey coming in with the donuts that also have some nice long range missile annoyances that those ASFs have to deal with. Plus, they're targeting all the omens that don't really have AA on board. Actually, they don't. They don't have AA. It's just a sonar, radar, and TMD. Or she built another donut at three donuts. Is two czars a game impacts his battle moose? I don't know. Eh, maybe. And yeah, it does say Hershey says, yep. It, he's like, it, it's it's important. Looks like he broke out of his house here. He's gone over to hide next to a couple of, or well, a couple, I say, a decent amount of aircraft carriers. And there's no point in putting up an air grid when you can just build a bunch of aircraft carriers that are mobile and you can run around the map producing ASFs, bombers, whatever the case may be. Very, very quickly. All of those aircraft carriers are being microed specifically here by Nix ones bombers to deal with all of that AA nonsense. Another donut coming into the middle. I don't think any of them, have any of them died? I don't see, maybe they are, they're just doom stacked. No, no, there's three. Oh, there's four, excuse me. Where's, looks like there's the two here. I'm assuming the one there and the one there. They're just, I think they're just stacked on top of one another. That's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, we can see the stack on top of one another. Then was it? Then he can't make any more. Kill all the naval yards, and he can't make any more. Definitely a smart move. Kill the production, and then you can't produce any more of those ships. The Tempest can still produce uh, T1 and T2 naval ships, but taking out the facilities would take out the T3 production. Just the same as taking out, you know, any source of mass would pretty much eliminate any way that your opponent could produce mass. Of course, there's the Rascom upgrade. There's the SACU gating in that can also have mass. But, you know, taking all of the mass prevents your opponent from also producing units, so that also works. Looks like Nick's starting to get a nice handle on things. That major fleet here from Gary has been eliminated, and now those donuts, just as Hershey said, are going after all of those production, and the bombers acting essentially as the air support. That's the first time I've ever said that for those donuts we see the third donut coming into range here pretty shortly don't know where it's going looks like it's going back to base fourth donut about to be established of course there are four donuts online here for gary we could see a donut on donut war here i don't really see those at all imagine building a few sam says moose yeah imagine building some aa there are of course missiles being fired from both of these donuts from team innocent against the phantom of gary see those little green streaks there are some t3aa sam size being established here by the aeon phantom player of gary but uh, looks like he's driven off those donuts for the time being here from hershey but the sacus are being annihilated here in the northeast tons of bombers going after all of those t3aa facilities and those t2 torque launcher facilities we even see some of those destroyers online as well. Just a ton. It's a ton of, of those torques landing in that water. And with four donuts online here, four Team Innocent. I wonder what he's going to do with them. Maybe he'll do some restorers or something or ASF of his own. Maybe he'll just go after all the naval units and just be done with it. And I think that's what he's really consigned himself to do. There is more, you know, some harassment from these subs in the middle here from Gary. But essentially, the majority of the fighting has shifted from the north to the east. It looks like it's moving clockwise. She's still hanging out over there. Nick, it's one up there. And, of course, the comm of Gary is down here. 
Looks like he has a uh, T3 Mexico could easily rebuild, but maybe he's busy doing something else and just didn't decide to rebuild it. Those donuts again not being targeted a lot by the AA. Looks like maybe one of nope, nope. I can't it's hard to select one or the other, but one of them at one hundred and twenty nine thousand mass killed, the other one at uh, ninety no not ninety one, seventy eight thousand mass killed. I think the third one's on top of it. So again, not helpful, Hershey, for doom stacking them like this. Maybe all three of them. Looks like it like I said, one thirty six. 18, 19, and 82. So probably about 250,000 mass killed just by those donuts alone. Battleship dies in like five seconds, says Hershey. It's a, I mean, when you have three donuts, it definitely dies very, very quickly. It would die, you know, a little bit slower, of course, if you had two or one, but look at that. Just, and deleted. Oh, almost deleted. Excuse me, the ASF come in here from Gary. Gary, Gary not building as a lot of AA. He's building AA around his base, but not building a lot of ASF in general, which, I mean, when you're dealing with that many bombers, it's really hard to deal with. But still. Build some AA. You gotta take out the donuts. You gotta take out the bombers somehow. Not building ASF is not gonna help your situation. And especially with that many bombers, even if you build lines and lines of AA, which he's currently doing, that will work eventually, but a lot of your stuff will be killed off in the interim. And that one of those shields on board those donuts has fallen a decent amount, but it is regening as we speak. There's 16,000, 100,000, 29,000. So we got, let's see, 30, 45, 145, essentially 300,000 mass killed on board those four donuts alone. He making Sam's now, says Hershey. Yep, he's making those. You should go combat your uh, island, says Boxeroo. I mean, there's a couple of SACs down there. Looks like there are some Vespers coming online to deal with this position here for Hershey. But again, those SACs have left. They've gone over here. Going to build the fifth donut here. Going to build the sixth one after that. And those donuts have been left alone here in the east. The bombers, looks like they've fallen back dealing with these SACs over here. And they're not stopping. They're not letting anything get by. Dad, he making AA. Dad, it's not. It's not nice. <laughs> it's uh, you could build a para so easily, says uh, Battle Moose to his allies. I mean, Hershey building a paragon would be very entertaining, just because he doesn't really have anything besides his SACUs. So that would be interesting. But he's building donuts. That's that's more entertaining for him. And it looks like. The fighting has subsided for the time being. I'm going to speed it up a little bit just because, you know, with essentially a 1v1 and no one's really fighting, it's kind of, I wouldn't say boring, but not as entertaining as it could be. Lines of, being, of AA being built, of course, by these SACUs. They're going to build some nice uh, anti-air SAM launchers, those T3 AA, but they're going to be taken up by those destroyers and some omens as well. The sixth donut is under construction. The restore spam has started here for Nick01. Is Gary building a game ender? Is he building artillery? Is he building anything? He's just building boats? I don't see, I mean, just building and building and building and building is not stopping. I don't blame him. He's in, you know, definitely a good position. But he needs to end the game, not just keep spamming out boats. Because as Anti-air is suffering, his ASF, his Air Force is suffering. Restore is coming in, taking out all of the mexes down here that once belonged to Hershey. And those donuts are moving in to kind of intercept, but I don't really see that happening with the ASFs, the Restorers, and the Donut. The Zara is here for Hershey. It looks like maybe one of them has died. See, I'll slow it back down a little bit and we'll look at the... No, he still has all six of them, or five of them, actually, at this point. But no, he's fine there. Looks like they're just, yeah, they're just doom stacked again. Again, I wish it made it very easy to see all of the everything when they stack like that. But it uh, looks like they're also building their own units as well. I wonder what they're producing. Looks like they're building court bombers as well. So both Hershey and Nick are going to be in the tort bomber business. That is a ton of help. Well, I kind of helped him now. So at the end, or just, well, he thinks he won. Here is his AECU. Or where is his AECU? It's right here. 
next to a bunch of uh, SACUs, kind of blending in with his environment. Top of Main Island. He's not going to break and kill Nick. That would be... I mean, he could do that. Not saying that's the best honorable thing to do, but, you know, I have seen one Phantom ally with, of course, a player, and then kill him off because he knew where his comm or his game ender or whatever the heck it was, so... You know, it's kind of, it's not dirt, it's a little dirty, but if a player accepts the alliance, you do run the risk, of course, that that player now knows where your comm is, what you're doing, what you're, you know, that kind of thing. So it's definitely a two-way street, but uh, definitely dangerous, to say the least. A few solaces out of your czars, the instant blue dies could maybe work. I mean, like, a, yeah, maybe, but, and at that point it would be, back to a 1v1 so I guess that would make sense but now we have a donut fighting three donuts and I don't think the donut is going to win the three donut fight just going to sit there and be annoying it looks like here in the south that's what I'm thinking of. that's what Percy's thinking to uh, battle moose it would be entertaining but uh, maybe Hershey will just stand next to Nick 01 and just watch that happen maybe he's moved over here now and look, look at the spy planes just launch Watching just all of those Aryanists just get launched out of those aircraft carriers is just intense. They kind of remind me of the Ven so, so from Star Wars, the Venator class Star Destroyer, which is used, which was used in the Clone Wars. It's again essentially the predecessor to the ISD, the Imperial Star Destroyer. The m central line of that Venator has these kind of hangars where they're you know the, essentially two red lines, and then there's the you know essentially the hangar bay right here. That's what those remind me of. Just the uh, food for that. I played uh, Star Wars Empire at War yesterday, and there was a vendor in that uh, in that episode, and it kind of made me remind of that. And we do see the donut being assaulted by those restorers. The AA on board those restorers are deadly. They're very, very annoying. And here comes another bulk of them. That donut is dead. D E D Paragon for Nick Nick. Gary built a Paragon. I thought he might have done that. I don't think I really noticed if he was going to go for it or not, but he did. Team Phantoms Gary the Goat, an Aeon player, has built a Paragon in a game where he essentially has infinite resources already, so infinity times infinity equals infinity. Those restorers are on their way to deal with said Paragon. There isn't enough gunships now just due to the horde of AA that's nearby. Oh, no, the shields are going to be, they're pretty low to the ground, so it should be fine. And those restorers, of course, uh, do come in. They take out a couple of the uh, shield emitters, but not many in the Paragon. Did take it some hit points damage, but not by much. I think uh, Team North, or the alliance between Nick and Hershey, has a nice little target to go after. I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe Hershey just ram some donuts down Gary's throat and kill him off that way kill off the Paragon at least 52 minutes on the clock here we do see spy planes getting a nice view here in the southwest I think that donut yeah the donut did die I don't see any other casualties here from Gary the goat oh there's one donut dead over here so that's probably Gary's I would assume but I could be wrong or is she building another donut and going to build another donut. And he's just not going to stop producing donuts. Oh, please tell me you're just building a Paragon somewhere. That'd be very entertaining. No? No? Okay. Is uh, Nick01 going to build a Paragon? He did build a Paragon, excuse me. He just... Maybe he just finished it. He's going to go for some salve. Ooh. 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 That's going to hurt. Ooh. That is going to hurt. I know what that's targeting. And uh, you don't have enough time now. Nick will have a dozen salvation soon, says Battle Moose to Hershey. So at this point, Hershey needs to make his move essentially right before or right after. he. Well, again, even if you kill the Paragon off here for Gary, he still has all of his. Gary, build a salvo on your main hive island on your boy. Sneakily move your Zars to your calm, says Battle Moose. Salvation has been started, so it does look like there's some innocence getting into the midst of this uh, phantom war here between Nick01 and Gary, saying, hey, uh, by the way, you probably should take a look at this because uh, it's going to be bad for you pretty soon. 
There are multiple salvations online, it looks. This is with one random shot. Don't know where that shot was going, but it went that way. One, two salvations are online. Third one to come online here pretty shortly. Nick Zero One builds another experimental, most likely another one of those salvations. Don't know what he's targeting. He's targeting, of course, the Paragon, which why would he target anything else? There's a nice little omen down here trying to go after the production facilities. He's making some headway, but not a lot. But again, some is better than none. And now it becomes a battle of how fast can Gary kill, not kill, but hold off against that uh, artillery bombardment. And of course we have Nick01 producing... I think he's only... Okay, he's only stopped with the third one. Building more... May, maybe he'll build more over here with all those hives. Don't see... More hives over here. Let's see. There there goes the Paragon. I knew it was going to go eventually just due to the bombardment. Did Gary build the Salvation in the interim? I don't think he did. I know he was warned to. And he did... Okay, no, he does build the Salvation. He's going to build the second one here pretty shortly. He's on his way to at least. Don't know if one is going to be enough, though. If Nick01 doesn't notice, he could take out the Paragon. But uh, with the fourth Salvation coming online here pretty shortly, I do not think Nick01 is going to let that happen. Moving west from top of his island, says Moose to Hershey. Looks like he's targeting uh, all of the mass vap, so he hasn't noticed the Salvation as of yet, which is good here for Gary. Nick is the uh, most likely to win at this point due to the Paragon and four Salvations online. And the Donuts have just moved to his calm just to kind of hang out. Looks like they might be uh, kill this with the artillery, says Hershey. Oh, the shields are down around that Paragon. Oh, he's targeting... What is he? The Salvations targeting the engineering stations, the hives? Very weird. I don't know why he's targeting those. He should be targeting the Paragon. The Salvation does get spotted. Well, I mean, maybe it does. Oh, maybe. Uh, let's see. Does Nick know about it? No, he doesn't know about it. He's just targeting all of the, the mass fabs. And those mass fab will be taken out here pretty shortly. The Salvation will just receive some AoE spread from all of that uh, attack power. Still the Salvation targeting the hives. I do do not know why. I don't know if he's trying to target the shield emitters themselves or not, but uh, there are more shields being built, so it does look like Nick is uh, at least aware of the Salvation's existence. Fifth one is now under construction, and the comm of Nick is up here. SACU is blowing up somewhere. Felt like it was somewhere down south, southwest. ACU says Hershey. Yep, the ACU gets pinged here. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like he got directly pinged. There goes the salvation. It is done and dusted. Next comm is at 11 o'clock off his main island. Oh, okay. If you're looking at the island 12, 11, it's right there. Load some tele SSU up and get ready to tele on Nick with every tele unit and T1 torp him. I mean, that might work. I don't know if it will, though, is the question. Nick does have the heavy shield on board and has 14,000 hit points, so that's 39,000 to chew through. Some destroyers do get back to try to target a couple of those Kiefer-class aircraft carriers, but they don't get anywhere, unfortunately, here for Gary. And it looks like it's the beginning of the end. Donuts are stacking over here. There's four of them protecting that commander of Hershey. Fifth one is being built as we speak, which might indicate there's a sixth one. That is the sixth one, because one of them did die. No, that's five. Okay, maybe he lost another one somewhere else. He was up to six, including the one that was being built at some point. Nick01 says GT2 his allies. I mean, at this point in the game, you have how many salvations? One, two, three, four, and then a fifth one on the way. You building? I was going to say, are you building another Paragon? He's building two Paragons at the same time. Nick producing technically 14,000 mass, not 1.4, 14,000 mass per second, which is insane. It is an insane amount of mass, and now the Salvations are targeting everything and the kitchen sink that Gary owns. 
He does have his five donuts. Don't know where he's going with those. He might just full send them. So we'll see about that. Looks like uh, they're just going to move northward for the time being. And units are punching through here from Nick 01 to take out those remaining forces here from Gary. I'm very interested to see what Hershey does. Maybe he's waiting for those torp bombers to go away. The SACU is still producing that donut. Will they shift over to teleportation and go for some cheeky plays? Looks like there was a aircraft carrier, that, a couple of them that got killed off or something. Hershey has teleportation online, building a nice little sonar platform as well. And the SACUs are just dying by the ones or fives or tens or whatever they're dying by. And it's not really looking good here for Gary at 57 minutes. This island here to the east that was producing all of those SACUs has been eliminated. Gary is now sitting at 176. And Nick is sitting at 301. 302, excuse me. That is a lot it is a lot of SACUs. That is so many. So, so many. Another Paragon here over here. Or here over here. Another Paragon over here. He's just going to line up Apocalypse class nu nuclear, nuclear, if I can speak, strategic missile launchers. And all of those donuts have been eliminated. A couple of them land on the main island, but uh, that's it. GG, Nick, well played here from Gary. Gary might just control K at this point. Go, says Battle Moose. Go, you too, says Nick. That air really messed me up. Yeah, I did mention that he should go for some anti-air or his own ASF. I wouldn't have gone para, but you did. I didn't want to go para. Then why did you? I thought you... Oh, it's in one of those. I thought you did it. Well, I thought you did it. Well, it's too late now, I guess. Three Paragons are online here for one player. It looks like Nick has broken or Hershey's broken with Nick. One of those donuts is inbound. Second donut has fallen. Third donut and fourth donut have fallen. Did they even drop? No, it doesn't look like they even dropped. Nope, question mark. And with that, Nick01 will win the game. How did that not, Nick? That should have worked. And Gary control K's everything, including himself. Nick, dad, I'm sorry. Oh, oh no. <laughs> there it goes. Hershey's going to go back home. We'll just watch the unfolding that is Hershey's demise. It was a tempest. It's time to dodge, says Nick. Here comes the tempest firing on that uh, stealth field generator. Just another Hershey fall. And Hershey going to build something on board that uh, commander. And just going to receive firepower to the face. Tempest targeting that uh, sonar platform. And one T1 bomber. Oh, he's teleporting, excuse me. That's where he's going. He is trying to teleport out of there, but the bombers are inbound. Those T1 bombers are inbound. He's not going to allow him to teleport. There he goes. He was going on over here in some direction, but that is it. Team Phantom. Well, technically it's not a team, but the Phantom player of Nick wins this Phantom game. And, of course, I... For innocence, I got to give it to Hershey for MVP just because he survived the longest. He assisted Nick. He wasn't really in a position to do anything else, so I don't really blame him. But, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do with, you know, one of your innocents gets sandwiched by two phantoms. Another one gets overrun by one phantom. Another one gets overrun by the other phantom, and then you're left alone. And your base gets overrun while those two phantoms are now engaging. So... Wasn't really the best situation here for the innocent team, but there was an innocent that did last longer than the other Phantom, so at least that's a benefit for them. And that would mean that Nick overall is the MVP. He won the game. He produced three Paragons, which is just a ridiculous amount of Paragons for one player to have. Usually you build another one and then hand one off to a player, and then you do the same thing, but there's no teammates to hand it off to, so... That is it here. Let me know down in the comments how you felt about the game. Please, if you haven't done so already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. Thank you so very much for watching, and I will see all of you in the next one.